Hey everybody, this is David with Average Joe Investing and in today's video I just want to make a quick update, let you guys know where I've been the last month or so. I know some of you saw the post on either the YouTube community tab or the pictures on Instagram where I've been in the hospital for a pretty extended amount of time. So I wanted to tell just kind of the quick story, kind of everything that happened, where I was and all that. But for those of you that are just here for the really quick update, I did have a lot of very, very nice messages coming through, a lot of support out there. I am okay. Obviously, I'm back at my house now. I'm no longer in a hospital. And I'm honestly not gonna be around YouTube that much for about two weeks. So I will have some pre-recorded videos coming out over the next two weeks, but I have about a week left of a lot of health things I really need to take care of. And then the following week after that, I'm actually going on a mini vacation with my wife for our one year anniversary. So if you are here just for the regular uh, financial videos I usually put out, they will be coming back starting September 2nd. But again, for those of you that kind of want to know a little bit more, I will go into a little bit short story and kind of what happened. So I was working on the house I've talked about before on this channel. We bought it for $75,000. Kind of, kind of fix it up, see if we can flip it, make a decent amount of money on it. And obviously it gives me a nice first home to live in for the time being. I was going up into our attic to do a little bit of work on the house. And like a lot of other homes, I have that old style where you pull it down, the ladder folds out and you kind of walk up that way. And while I was up there, I got a pretty decent cut on my hand. And honestly, I didn't think much of it. Like most things in life, it's not that big of a deal. I put some hydrogen peroxide on it, cleaned it out, put some Neosporin, threw a bandaid on it, went back to work. And everything was kind of normal from there. For the next two or three days, I was just kind of doing my normal work around the house, just kind of doing my normal thing. But then I woke up one morning and my hand was really, really swollen. And not swollen to the point where, you know, it's just like, okay, maybe I bruised it or something. It was very obvious that it was starting to get infected. It kind of gets like that bubbly piece there and not to be gross or anything, but like some fluid starts to grow on it. And I kind of let it go for another day. But when I woke up the next morning, it was still there. It was actually growing. It was even worse than before. So I decided to finally just go to a walk-in. And when I went to the walk-in, you know, pretty normal things. They kind of took a look at it, said there might actually still be like chunks of wood or something in my hand. Not really sure there. But what they decided to do was to just give me a shot. It was like a, usually when you take uh, antibiotics, it's like 250 milligrams or whatever. This was a pretty major swelling. So they actually gave me a one gram shot of antibiotics. And then they actually set it up so I could go see a plastic surgeon in a day or two. So they could cut it open, see what was going on and kind of reconstruct and obviously drain out whatever was going on. And we kind of left the walk-in and that was that. Well, I kind of let it go for about another 12 hours or so. I was out to dinner with my friends and I started to notice that I was getting these red lines just going right up my veins in my arm. And my wife is kind of one of those people that freaks out. I'm usually like, no big deal, whatever, I got hurt, it's, it is what it is. But my wife was kind of freaking out a little bit because when we started dinner, it only went about five inches up my arm from where the cut was. But by the time we were done eating, it had actually gone up past my elbow and was actually heading up towards my shoulder. And so she kind of decided that wasn't okay and we were actually gonna have to go to the emergency room. So we get to the emergency room and honestly, they kind of took me in really, really quickly. So I've been to the emergency room a lot. I've had my appendix removed. I've broken a lot of bones in my body. I've had concussions, things like that in the past. So I'm used to going to the emergency room, kind of sitting there for a while. Well, almost as soon as I got there, they immediately drew almost 10 or 12 vials of blood. And then they went in and actually did a couple x-rays on my hand as well. And then I got kind of taken out into a separate room. And obviously you sit there and kind of wait for a doctor to come by. And they probably took about half an hour, 40 minutes before somebody came in. And the next person I saw was actually the person that drew my blood. And that's where things kind of took a weird twist. So the lady who took my blood came back in and said something that kind of scared me, something I've never heard in a hospital before in all the times I've ever been there. She walked in, her face was kind of pale, and she said, your doctor says if you want to talk to either the chaplain we have here or call in a priest or a minister, now's probably a good time to do so. And to be honest with you, I didn't think much of it right that second. I was just kind of like, oh, I'm good, like I'm fine. I'm just kind of, you know, just waiting this out, gonna get this thing cleared up and I'll go home. It wasn't until a little while later I realized it's because they got back my blood test and found out that I had probably sepsis, which is an infection in your bloodstream that kills about 20% of people that get it. Depending on what numbers you look at, I've seen anywhere between one in six, one in four. My doctor was pretty straightforward with me when I finally met with him and said it's pretty much one out of five people that get this end up dying. 
And basically what it is, is, you know, usually when you get a normal cut, you get an infection. That infection spread obviously not only through my hand, but then those lines going through my arm, I thought it was cellulitis, something like that, which is another type of infection. But they said it was actually much, much worse than I thought. And actually the hospital I was at wasn't really prepared to do anything right then because they didn't have any surgeons on hand. They decided that I'd actually have to go into surgery at, for an actual hand specialist. They didn't want to just have anybody do it. So I actually got sent from that hospital, first time in my life ever, had a ride in an ambulance to a nearby hospital, probably about 10, 15 minutes away. And I met with a whole different group of specialists there. And it was determined that I'd have to go in and have hand surgery almost immediately. I do have to say that the second hospital they sent me to was definitely a lot more open and about talking about things. The first hospital I was at was great. I mean, they got me in, they did the blood test, they did everything immediately, but they really didn't tell me that much about my blood test. They were kind of like, eh, things are kind of shaky. Let's send you to the other hospital. When I got there, my nurses much, much more friendly, much more open about things, what was going on, kind of what happened. And yeah, I went in, I had hand surgery. They did actually find a pretty decent sized chunk of wood up in my hand. And the problem with that is one, obviously it's a piece of living matter, so it can grow a lot of bacteria around it. The other issue is this is a 60 year old house. We're not sure what's up in the attic if you know the previous owners had rats, bats, you know, something like that and they never really cleaned up the roof that much or they never cleaned up the attic that much because that's a lot of bacteria, a lot of different things that could potentially be in that. And like I said, a lot of times when you're on antibiotics, they're 250 milligrams, they're 500 milligrams. At this point, I'm in an IV, I'm getting two grams of antibiotics, which takes about half an hour for it to actually go into your body, but I'm getting this every four to six hours. So I have an IV constantly dripping into my body, and obviously I go through surgery, I have all that stuff done, and that's where things kind of got weird, because they took out the actual piece of wood that was in my hand, so we figured that would stop the infection from growing. And it was pretty nice, you know, we, I sat there, I was in the hospital for probably three days at this point, I was actually about ready to leave. The nurse had brought me the discharge papers. She was like, okay, we got the thing that was infected out of your hand. Those red lines that were in my arm actually started to recede. They were getting a lot more faint. They were only about three or four inches long now, as opposed to being all the way up to my shoulder at this point. And they thought things were pretty well. They thought things were really kind of getting better. And then right before I signed my discharge papers, one of the blood work ladies who had taken my blood at like two o'clock in the morning, walks in and says, don't send him home yet. We just took a look at more of his blood samples and they're still growing things. Um, so the antibiotics they were gonna write me up on weren't necessarily the ones they wanted me to have there. The doctor came back in, said you're probably gonna be stuck here another day or two because we gotta run more antibiotics directly into bloodstream. We didn't kill off everything we thought we did. And it sucks because I was about to sign my discharge papers. I was ready to come home. And now I know that I'm gonna be stuck there for at least another day or two. And that's pretty demoralizing, you know, you think you get a pretty minor cut on your hand, you find out it's actually this really major infection, and then it gets worse than that. It's not just cellulitis like you think, it actually turns out it might be sepsis, which is, like I said, it is actually a potentially life-threatening uh, infection, a life-threatening illness you can get. And then on top of that, you're finally out of the woods. You finally, okay, everything's fine, I'm good to go home. And then they walk in and say, yeah, things aren't quite as good as we thought they were. So from that point, we changed up the antibiotics I was taking there. Again, I was still getting, you know, IV drips into my arm every couple of hours. They did change things up a little bit. We tried a couple of different antibiotics. Again, super, super friendly staff there. The only thing that really sucks is when you're kind of in a place where you're not moving around that much, they don't really give you that much food. I was kind of joking around with my wife the entire time because, you know, I'm a bigger person. And when you look at the food they were giving you, it was like, oh man, this sounds great. It's gonna be cinnamon French toast and sausage. It was like a slice of bread and two sausage links. And it was funny because they have like a board up there that's like, these are my goals before I go home today. And one of the goals on the board was saying that, you know, you were being okay with the diet and everything. And I was joking around with the nurses the entire time. It's just kind of the person I am. So I was laughing. She's like, well, she's like, you know, are, is, are the meals kind of agreeing with your body? And I looked at her, I'm like, well, maybe if there was like six times as much food, I mean, I don't really eat that much, but after not eating for over 24 hours before my surgery and everything, it was kind of weird, you know? It, you get a piece of bread and two sausage links after you come out of that. And then, you know, just being there for four or five days and that's all the nutrients you're actually putting back into your body. Drinking water a ton, but food not really that much. But anyways, I sat there for another day or two. So, I mean, now we're at the point where I've been in the hospital almost a week. 
they finally come in, we sign some discharge papers, and I finally get to come home. And I've been home now for probably about a week. I know I haven't posted anything yet. Um, I've been really, really sore. I've been really, really weak still. I'm taking a lot of antibiotics. Um, I've been back a couple times. I actually ended up having to get stitches after the surgery. I went back after the week I'd been in the hospital. They took a look at everything and decided that it wasn't time to take the stitches out. I still had a lot of stuff kind of going on there. Um, they actually gave me different antibiotics. So I still had a, like a decent amount of infection around where the actual cut itself was. And then I just went back a couple days ago, got my stitches out. So hopefully everything's good there. Again, I still don't really feel 100% myself. I still feel pretty weak in terms of just overall ability right now. But I am a lot better now. Um, like I said, out of the hospital, things are going a little bit better. So hopefully I will be able to come back and just make YouTube videos like normal again. Like I said, probably not going to be happening until September 2nd or so. There's just a lot of stuff going on in life right now. Um, the next week's going to be really, really hectic. And then the week after that, like I said, I am going on vacation. So I will be filming some of the stuff. Uh, we're going to be doing rail biking, which I've never done before in my life. Um, we're going to do some paragliding, things like that, parasailing. So I am going to take my GoPro, try to get some videos of that, um, and probably post that on Average Real Life. But anyways, that's kind of where I've been the last month or so. I know it's kind of a weird timeline. I kind of got hurt and then didn't really do anything for a couple days. It got really, really bad. Ended up in the hospital for quite some time. Came home, still really not myself. And I'm just kind of starting to get back to the point now where everything's okay. So again, I really do appreciate the support. I really appreciate everybody kind of reaching out to me. Everything seems like it's gonna be just okay. And I will be back very, very soon. Like I said, there are a couple of videos coming up. Um, the next one should actually be something I'm bringing back. I did the first year I was on YouTube. I didn't do it last year. And that's actually gonna be playing fantasy football with a bunch of the viewers. Um, maybe getting a couple of YouTubers mixed in it as well. So keep an eye out for that here in the next week or so. Anyways, I will see you guys on September 2nd if I don't post some more pre-recorded videos. I've been David with Average Joe Investing. Thank you so much for the support. And I'll see you all very soon.